Hi all. Yeah, this is a very serious topic and I would like you to listen. Most of my videos, just in case you have watched them, perhaps you would have gotten to realize that I have music at the background of them. But right here I'm playing no music. And you know why? Because I'm talking about love. Yeah, love. Because some people, you know, tend to define love according to the atmosphere they find themselves in according to what they feel but is that the way we define love what I see is the world having control of the life of so many people but the world should not have control over Christians the world can have controls over people of the world because they are the same but God has given us dominion over the world he has not given the world dominion over us, so we should have control over the world. But if you get to look at all these things and get to look at the kind of life that people live out there, you might get to say, the world seems to control Christianity. But is that true? I don't see it this way. I see it differently. I see it different. I think, I believe the world controls the life of the lukewarm Christians. The Christians who only claim to walk in Christianity. That you call yourself a Christian does not make you a Christian. That you put potatoes into the oven and you bring it out after 20 minutes does not make it become chicken. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that you go to the church does not make you a Christian. That you say with your mouth you know Jesus does not make you like Jesus. But why is it this way? Because the world does it this way. The world, for example, cannot love people except they see them in pain. But is that the right time to love? So Christians out there, let's not allow things. Choose when and how we love the Lord. But let us love regardless of whatever situation we find ourselves in. I know you all want to be loved. We all want to be loved. The world wants love. God wants our love. You see? And God has commanded us to love. But some people still misunderstand this word love. Yeah, some even have forgotten every other commandment of the Father because of this one word love because Jesus called that word love they don't believe in the laws of the Father anymore so this word is very important the book of Revelation for example talks about the end times we are in the end times according to the prophecies in the Bible and according to what we see and experience every day what we hear you see but I know so many of you are afraid of the end times but still you claim you love God but the truth is should you be afraid of the end time if you love God of the end times if you love God no you know what you should be afraid of or who you should be afraid of wrong not the Antichrist not even the devil because God has not given us the spirit of fear right but you know who you should be afraid of God yes yeah, some of you would mean or you might say, how can you say we should be afraid of God, who is love, because God is love? Yeah, I know God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. But the scripture still tells us the fear of God is important. Jesus even said with his own words, do not fear the man, do not fear them. Who kill the body 
but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him, which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Yes. And who was Jesus speaking with? His disciples. Christians. Believers. Asking them to fear God. Be afraid of the tough side of God. Because he is love. And he's got a tough side. You need to escape the wrath of God. Because no man will be able to stand. I know he is love. And I love his love inside. You know, I know he's, con he's a consuming fire according to the scriptures. And I love his consuming side. I love my God that way. Because he is that way according to the scriptures. So he is perfect. So if you want a God who only has a love inside. Then it's obvious you don't want the God of the Bible. Because that's not what the Bible says. Jesus praised churches in the book of Revelations. For example, he praised the church of Ephesus. You see? But there was something he told this church, which is very, very important. He told the church, I have something against you. Because you have left your first love. Jesus warned them about getting into heaven without this love nobody will get to heaven which so many Christians do not understand today and I want us to talk about this love but firstly I will describe the kind of love that I see today amongst Christians you know I see I see so many laws coming out you know in countries and different nations so many laws being enforced, for example, in America, you know, I see gender equality, I see the use of um, toilets, for example, that people are allowed, guys are allowed to um, get into the toilet of ladies if they feel okay with it, if they are okay with it. You know, I see people being allowed to choose the kind of gender they want to become. You know, I see children being taught these things in school, kids to go into the kind of toilet they want and all these things. In Europe, in Europe, you see billboards outside on street that's got naked women on them. Naked. I'm not talking about just the back or whatever. I'm talking about you see naked women. You know, I saw these things and I was like, oh my God, what's happening to this world? Not just that. There are pictures right now pictures right now when you go out in Europe um, with a man and a woman having sex yeah clear pictures yeah see no one even cares about moral anymore not even about kids you know kids today are being forced to become adults and I'm sure you all you know see that the things which were called bad some years ago are now called good some words which we are not which are not allowed to be used on tv you know in the public are very much allowed today but what is resisted today the name jesus is resisted you see Things are not normal anymore. Christians today celebrate such things. You know, you hear Christians say, Yeah, but don't go against these Christians who want to live their life this way, who want to change their gender. You know, that Christ has said we should show love. So love them, allow them. It's good, it's normal. Show love, celebrate them. Are you serious? And I've gotten to read a lot of comments, you know, where Christians say, Jesus has commanded us to love our neighbor, so why don't you love them? Are you serious? Did Jesus command us to love our neighbor? You think so? 
Jesus told you there? Love your neighbor? That's what I read. Alright, if you think Jesus said love your neighbor, then it means you don't read your Bible. Then let's go through it. Because the scripture says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They die for lack of knowledge. Perish does not only mean you die here on earth. Perish also means losing your eternity in his, from his presence. Perish. For lack of knowledge, people are going to miss the rapture. So I don't want you to misunderstand this word love. And if people get to misunderstand this word love, you know, you cannot blame it on God. It's just about, you know, Christians who do not even read their Bible, who do not even read by the Spirit. In English, the word love, you know, it's, it's the same, love, 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 so you mix up the word. But in the Greek, because the English Bible was taken from the Greek. But what does the Greek say? The Greek has called different kinds of love. The Greek um, makes mention, for example, of eros, as of E-R-O-S, which is like, um, which is a um, sexual love. You know, it comes from the word, you know, not come from the word, but we have the word erotic. You know, like an emotional love. And then we have um, Philostogos, which is um, natural affection. You know, it has to do with relationships. You know, relatives, for example, a mutual love between parents and children. You know, we often hear motherly love. And that's this word, Philostogos. You know, um, love between husband and wife, for example. And this kind of word, you find like just one time in the Bible. You know, um, for example, in Romans chapter 12, let's read. It says, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another. You know, affection here in Romans chapter 12 verse 10 also means Philadelphia. You know to you know have affection but one to another with brotherly love brotherly love here is then the word philostogos you see therefore note this kind of love is between families blood relationship so it even tells us something very important Jesus M M M in the book of Romans here, he was being said to the church. That means the church should actually be your family. You should have the kind of family love for the church. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 12, verse 49 and 50? Jesus said, um, when someone came and said, you know, your mom is out there looking for you, something like that. Jesus said, here. You know, pointed you know towards his disciples, and he said, "Behold, my mother, my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of the Father, of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, and my mother." What's Jesus trying to say? Calling the church his family, and that's where we need the word philostogos in the church. Not for the people of the world. Family love. Because the church should be your family. People who do the will of God should be your family. Not the people of the world. Showing the world philostogos is scripturally wrong. And that's how weak it is when you hear love. I know that there is, for example, no partiality in Christ. You know, Christ loves everyone. That's what everyone says and that is true there is no partiality but imagine you being a father or a mother and you have a son or a daughter and you get a letter from school you know and um, the letter says you have to pay the school fees of your child you know before tomorrow or else your child will be exmatriculated and you get you know you didn't have the money but you got the money you know just right in time and you have to pay the school fees 
and you're on the way to school and just at the gate of the school a man approaches you and says he has to pay the school fees of his child too and for example the school fees cost um, one thousand dollars and you have one thousand three and the man says he needs one thousand how much would you give the man if you as a father or a mother gives the man 300 because you have to pay the school fees of your child too, which is 1,000, are you being partial? No, you're not being partial. So God knows why he says love your family with this kind of love. Because it's not for the world. Remember in John chapter 17 verse 9, Jesus said, I pray for them, but I do not pray for the world. But I pray for them, you know, because you have given them to me, and they are yours. Jesus knows what he was saying. See, the same blood flows in Christ. Um, I mean, the same blood that flows in Christ flows in the church. And then another word in the Greek for love is filio. Filio has to do with sentiment, with feelings, you know, best described as brotherly love friendship love so between friends being fond of someone you see um being you know like you have a friend you're kind to your friend you know you you want to assist your friend you know you you, you have feelings for your friend that's what filio means filio and i have seen you know kind of cultures for example in in europe where you find people you know give themselves kisses on the cheek you see um to show love, you see, and this actually, this kind of love, filio, is what the Bible used to describe the kiss Judas betrayed Jesus with. And this kind of love you have like around about 19 times in the scriptures. You know, for example, you have um, Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. He says, he that loveth his father or his mother more than me. That's what Jesus said. Is not worthy of me. And he that loves his son or daughter more, more than me is not worthy of me. What is he trying to say? He that has filio for his father and mother, daughter or son. He's not worthy of me. So if you feel, if you have sentiment for them much more than Christ, then it's wrong. The Bible says Jesus wept. Right? And the Jews said, Behold how he loved him, Judas. I am sorry, Lazarus. But what, what were the Jews saying? They, they were saying how he had filio for Judas, um, for Lazarus. Oh my goodness, for Lazarus. You see, he had this kind of sentiment, feeling, friendship, love for Lazarus. And then another scripture says, He that loves his life shall lose it. If you have filio, sentiment, if you have feelings for your life, you would lose it. And if you hate your life, in this world, you will keep it unto eternal, um, eternity, unto, um, unto life eternal. And that's this word filio. Yeah. And Jesus also said, if you were of this world, the world would love his own. The world will have filial feelings for his own. But because you are not of this world, but I have chosen you, the world will hate you. What does it mean? It means you are not allowed to show filio to the world. Clear. Philostogos and filio are wrong for the world. Christians mix it up and that's where you get trouble and that's where you don't see Christianity as powerful as it should be. You see? And also the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3 that as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. What does it mean? It means this is very powerful. Very, very powerful. Because I know this is powerful when I think about Abraham. But let's, let's, let me talk about something that I want to talk about. You know, Abraham had to offer his own son. His only son for God. You see, because he trusted God. Because his love for God 
exceeded the love that he had for his son. You see? But today, it will be very difficult to find a Christian who can offer his son, his child or daughter for God. I'm not joking. You know, I don't know if you can do it. I don't know. But 98% of people today would not be able to do it. Because they would have excuses. For example, they might say, but I don't think that is the voice of God. That could be the devil. You see? Or some Christians might say, but do you think Abraham really did that if it comes to this you know, um, um, opportunity, this um, um, time to offer your child? Some of them would say, are you sure Abraham really did that? You see? And, you know, but these Christians have forgotten that the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow. Therefore, if a Christian still finds it difficult to differentiate between God's voice and other voices, what makes this Christian a sheep? Imagine what Christ said. You are not worthy of me. That's powerful, right? That tells us how many people would make it when Christ comes. Yeah, and if you can fight for your friend, for example, but you cannot fight for the word of God, then you are missing it somewhere. But note, I did not say fight for God. Nobody can fight for God. But fight for his word. If you care for your life, thinking your life is precious, then it means you don't care about the word of God. Filio, like I said, is not for the world. But it is for Christians. It's for God. Sentiment. For Christ. You see? Now back to what I said um, before I um, you know, changed. The um, story, you know, in Revelation 3, verse 19, Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and I chasten. And what does it say? The Bible says also that open rebuke is better than secret love. Therefore, if you cannot rebuke a friend, you say you have filio for your friend, and you cannot rebuke a friend when he commits a sin, then you do not love your friend. Yeah, because verse 2 of Psalm chapter 27 verse 5 says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So if you think Christ loves you enough not to rebuke you because you want only love from Christ, then you are wrong. I hear Christians say, God is love. God cannot do anything to hurt you. You know, but... God cannot even hurt you in a good sense. You know, it's not about God hurting you, but it's about God doing something that might get you hot. Not him hurting you, but he does something and you get hot because of what he did. And then if you think that's not possible, then I'd want to show you the scripture. Because if you read Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and he scourges every son he receives he does this to them so if you endure chastening God deals with you as sons for what son is whom is 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 he whom the father does not chasten but if you be without chastisement whereof all are partakers then you are bastards and not sons that means if you don't receive chastisements from God then he's not your father and finally we have a kind of love that has over 116 scriptures in the Bible and what's this love agape this love means you know like moral 
goodwill, like principle, like your duty, you know, it has nothing to do with attraction. It has nothing to do with charm. You know, this love is undeserving. You know, loving someone who's not worth it. For example, Christ died for us, you know, and we were not worth it. You know, and that's what agape is all about. You know, it requires no payments at all. No payments. You see, and um, this kind of love does not fade. It does not, you know, like, um, increases and decreases. It's just the same. It doesn't change. No pity. You have no pity. When you have pity, that is not agape. Agape has no pity, no feelings, no attraction, no charm. You know, no sentiment. And this is the kind of love the Bible wants us to have. Because this is the kind of love God has. You see? And let's go to the scriptures and take a look. Matthew chapter 24 verse 12 says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax strong, um, cold. The love of many shall wax cold. Because of sin, agape, God's love, is going to decrease in the lives of so many people. And what does the Bible say also in John chapter 15, verse 10? It says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my agape. Even as I have kept my father's commandments, and I abide in his agape. God's love. No sentiment, no attraction. You just go. Right? Yeah. And then the Bible also says, And now abides faith. Hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Anywhere you see charity in the King James, that's agape. That's the kind of love that God has. God's love is agape. Yeah. And um, the Bible also says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, if any man has agape for the world, the agape of the Father is not in him. We are not supposed to love the world. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, the Bible says, Beloved, let us have agape for one another, for the agape of God. Because, um, for the agape is of God, love is of God. And everyone that loves, everyone that has agape is born of God and knows God. Now the most important scriptures that I would want to show you, because you, some of them say, Jesus said, love your neighbor. Yeah. Matthew chapter 19, verse 19, Jesus says, honor your father and your mother. And then he said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, as thyself. Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, the Bible says, Jesus said himself, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He did not say, love your neighbor, but as thyself. In Mark chapter 12, verse 31, he said again, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, there is no other commandment greater than this. After he said, love God with your whole heart, with your whole body, with your whole mind, with your whole soul. In Romans chapter 13, verse 9, Jesus did not say this. You know, um, the apostle said it. And he said, an, 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 an apostle said it. And he said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Nobody said, love your neighbor. But it's always as thyself. And can you realize now the mistake Christians make? You see, it's not just about love. Some have, you know, um, you know gotten to see this as a channel to commit sin you see and what does it actually mean love thy neighbor as thyself as thyself it means if you want to love a transgender for example you should first first think about you as thyself as yourself think about yourself see if you want to love a sinner think about yourself that means you have to know 
who you are. If you are godly, love people in a godly manner. If you're a Christian, you don't and you don't feel like going to the club and someone says let's go to the club love your neighbor as thyself you don't have to go to the club that is god's love because you have to do what is right because you have the spirit of rightness in you you see if someone for example says let's smoke weed you know and you don't want to you don't have to sit down there and watch him smoke weed and say nothing the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't do it, you know it's wrong. You tell the person, this is wrong. It's not right according to the scripture. That is as thyself. If you don't tell them, that is sin. Because the scripture says that he would ask for the blood of someone who misses heaven in, from your hands if you do not correct that person. You see, so I don't know why Christians, you know, try to say, okay, let's celebrate, you know, the world, you know, these people. Because they've not gotten to understand, they've not gotten to understood, you know, what exactly the love is all about. The love of Christ. You see? Yeah, a true Christian with God's love would not say, show love in such a manner. They would say, show the kind of of love that Christ has you see that is the kind of that is a wrong love actually that the world shows that these Christians show because the Bible says agape is not done that way agape has no sentiment then a few scriptures more John chapter 13 verse 35 but these shall all men know that Ye are my disciples, if you have agape for each other. You see, and First John chapter 5 verse 3, For this is the agape of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Commandments, S, you can check it out yourself. He talks about the laws of his father. Second John chapter 1 verse 6, And this is the love that we walk after his commandments yes. this is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning you should walk in you see so it will really be painful if Christians are right in every other way but miss the rapture just because of love love is not about you putting you know um, um, your you know putting your hands you know on your heart and you say oh I love I love you I love God and everything it's not about you you know it's not about your feelings you know but you have to prove your love you know it's about what you do you know he says if you love me keep my commandments that's what Jesus said keep them do them you see love your neighbor as yourself you know, so if I told you, for example, that I love, love you and I do not act it out, you won't believe me. If I act hatred, if I act, you know, hate, if I act, you know, in a way to show that I hate you, but I tell you that I love you, you don't believe me. But if I act in a way to show that I love you, but I tell you I hate you, you would think I'm lying because... You would say, but he loves me. He shows he loves me. So that tells us, you know, that action speaks louder than words, like people say. And that's why Jesus, you know, um, asked us to do his works. Because it shows that we love him. Remember, faith without work is dead. And I've heard a lot of times, you know, the Old Testament, people say the Old Testament was about works. And the New Testament has nothing to do with works. They are totally wrong because so many scriptures I've read now shows that works also count in the New Testament. But don't get me wrong, you know, because Christians misunderstand this. The Bible never said that our 
um, our relationship has nothing to do with our works. Our relationship with Christ has something to do with works. If not, the Bible would not tell us that we are workers together with Him in His vineyard. We are workers together with Christ. Yes, we work with Christ. And I can still give a lot of scriptures to, sh scriptures to show that works count in the New Testament. But like I said, don't get me wrong. We are not, we are not saved by works. You see, we are saved by grace. Salvation, salvation has nothing to do with works but grace. But our walk with Christ, our reward, our making the rapture, Christians, believers, your works count. Scripturally. I'll prove that to you. The parable of the talents, for example. You remember the parable of the talents that Jesus told? What do you think he meant? Note, the servants were not casted out into outer darkness because of their sins. No, because of their works. Yeah, talents. You see, I won't go really deep into this right now, but I'm going to do that in my next teaching. But for now, I want to show you just a few scriptures to prove that your works count in the New Testament. Not what saves you, but what gets you raptured. I'm going to prove it to you. One, the church in Ephesus. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And how you cast, you, can, you cannot bear them which are evil. You see? He said he knows their works. He knows their labor. He knows their patience. And this was a commendation. Let's go to the church of um, Smyrna. And let's read what Jesus said. Jesus said, I know your works. I know your tribulations. And I know your poverty. But you are rich. I know your works. Jesus started with works. Very important. Let's go to the church in Pergamon. The church in Pergamon, Jesus said, I know your works. Let's go to the church in um, Tiatira. Jesus said, I know your works, and I know charity. I know your service, and I know your faith. Faith without works is dead, and I know your patience. Patience in doing the work. Okay, let's go to the church in Sardis. Jesus said, I know your works. All right, let's go to the church in Philadelphia. I told you, Jesus said, I know your works. Hmm. Let's go to the church in... Um, Laodicea. What did Jesus say? I know your works. Thou art not neither cold nor hot, but lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out. You see? Works count. And we have to do it right. Right. There are works there in the church of Laodicea. They had no commendation. Their works did not count. Because they were lukewarm. We need hot workers for Christ. Yes, your work counts. Don't get deceived. Salvation will save you. But the doctrine of once saved, always saved, is a lie from hell. God bless you.